In the previous video, I stated that there are two important series that we interact with a lot, and that was the arithmetic series and the geometric series. The previous video focused on the arithmetic series. This video is going to take a look at how do we find the sum of a geometric series. And just like with the arithmetic series, before we get to the geometric series, we first need to look at what a geometric sequence is. A geometric sequence is one where each term is equal to the previous term times a common ratio. And we'll call that common ratio r. So in arithmetic series, we were adding a common difference. A geometric series, we're going to be multiplying a common ratio. So an example of this would be maybe the geometric sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, and so on. And you can see to go from 2 to 6, we multiplied by 3. From 6 to 18, we multiplied by 3. From 18 to 54, we multiplied by 3. That multiply by 3 is our common ratio, or the r. And so we're going to start by defining this geometric sequence recursively. And then we'll look at how we can find it explicitly. Recursively, we can see that the first term is equal to 2. And then every term after that, we take the common ratio of 3 and multiply it by the previous term, times 3, times 3, times 3. And that leads to the explicit formula, which just like with the arithmetic series, is the one we'll use the most. And the explicit formula says, OK, if we're multiplying by 3 over and over again, that's like taking 3 raised to an exponent. But you might notice that because we're off by one term, we don't start with the 0th term. We start with the first term. Again, we're going to have to do the n minus 1. But if I plug in, for example, n equals 2, That'll give me 3 to the 2 minus 1, which is 3. And the second term is actually 6. So we're going to have to actually multiply by the first term 2 times 3 to the n minus 1 to get the 6. And now when I multiply by 2, it does equal 6, which I want for that second term. So we can generalize this. much like we generalized with the arithmetic series. If I want a general recursive formula, we're going to say the first term is equal to the first term, whatever that might be. But then the nth term is equal to the common ratio times the previous term. Or the more useful explicit formula, says a sub n is equal to the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. And again, these formulas are going to be what guide everything we see in the geometric series. So let's talk about that geometric series or the sum of a geometric sequence. Adding up all the terms of a geometric sequence. 
I don't have a fun math history story for this one like we did with the arithmetic series in Goss in elementary school. But we do have a formula for the sum of the first in terms of a geometric series. We're going to say that the sum, as n goes from 1 to n, of the geometric series a times r to the n minus 1, that's the explicit formula, the sum of that, is equal to s sub n is equal to the first term times 1 minus the common ratio to the n power divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So for example, if we want to find the sum of the first five terms of negative 3, 6, negative 12, and so on, what I see is we're multiplying by negative 2 each time. So r, my common ratio, we could get it by taking the second divided by the first term, is negative 2. So then we can go to our formula and say s sub n is equal to the first term, negative 3, times 1 minus the common ratio of negative 2 raised to the n power, there's five terms, divided by 1 minus the common ratio of negative 2. If I put an extra set of parentheses around my denominator, I can type that into the calculator just like that. And when I do, we get negative 33 is the sum of the first five terms. Let's try another example. Let's say given the first term is 6. And the fourth term is 16 divided by 9. We're going to find the sum of the first four terms. Well, we'd really like to use our sum formula. The problem is when we try and use our sum formula, we start with the first term, 6, times 1 minus the ratio, which we don't know, to the n power divided by 1 minus the ratio. Well, we need to find our ratio. To do that, we know the explicit formula for a sub n is the first term times the ratio to the n minus 1 power. Well, we know a sub 4 is 16 ninths. a sub 1 is 6 times r to the 4 minus 1, or third power. Well, if I divide both sides of this by 6, multiplying by 1 sixth, let's go ahead and do a little reducing. That's going to be 8 thirds. So we have 8 over 27 equals r to the third power. And if I take the third root of both sides, the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. My common ratio is 2 thirds. And so that's what gets to go into the formula, is 2 thirds as my common ratio. Again, I'm going to be careful. The denominator needs to be in parentheses when I type that into my calculator. And when I do, if I change it to a fraction, we get 130 over 9 as my sum of those first four terms. Now, what's special about a geometric series is it's possible to quickly add up an infinite number of terms in a geometric series. And that's what I want to take a look at next. Let's find the sum of infinite terms. There's kind of two cases we have to watch out for. If the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1, 
then the sum of the first infinite terms is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. We say this converges or adds to a specific number. However, if the absolute value of the ratio is greater than 1, we'll say the sum of the first infinite terms does not exist. D and E for does not exist, we call that diverges because it does not add to a specific number. In other words, it adds to infinity. So if I asked to find the sum of 5 minus 5 sevenths plus 5 forty ninths minus 5 over 343 plus, and so on and so forth. This is a geometric series. I can find my ratio by taking the second term, 5 sevenths, and dividing by 5. Actually, the second term is negative 5 sevenths. Let's not lose our signs, which is equal to negative 5 sevenths times the reciprocal 1 fifth which means the common ratio is negative 1 7th. And the absolute value of negative 1 7th is less than 1. I know this series is going to converge to some specific number. And we can quickly calculate the sum of those infinite terms by taking the first term, a sub 1, divided by 1 minus the ratio. Well, the first term is 5 divided by 1 minus the ratio is negative 7, negative 1 7th, which makes it plus 1 7th. And a little simplifying, if I multiply everything by 7, I get 35 over 7 plus 1. The sevens are gone, and we have 35 over 8. And so it turns out this sum, because the ratio is smaller than 1, the absolute value of the ratio is smaller than 1, it converges after an infinite number of terms. It finally adds up to 35 eighths. Let's do one more example. Let's say we're given. The first term is 1 third, and the sixth term is negative 81 over 32. We're going to find the sum of the infinite terms. Well, again, we're missing that common ratio. But we do have an explicit formula that says a sub n is equal to the first term times the ratio to the n minus 1. So the sixth term is negative 81 over 32. The first term is 1 third, and we're looking for that common ratio to the 6 minus 1, or fifth power. Multiplying both sides by 3 will give me negative 243 over 32 is equal to the ratio to the fifth power. Taking the fifth root of both sides, the ratio is negative 3 halves. So do I plug that into my formula, that the first infinite terms are the first term over 1 minus r? No. Why not? Because the absolute value of my ratio is bigger than 1. 
this series will diverge. In other words, it adds up to infinity. Therefore, there is no sum. We could say the sum does not exist, or d and e. So that's a quick introduction to geometric series. First, we define a geometric sequence as each term is equal to the previous term times a common ratio. With that in mind, we found a formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series. And if the common ratio is less than 1, we can even find the sum of the infinite terms of the geometric series. So now it's your turn to practice some of these out of the book. Try a few of these and let me know if you have any questions.